A lot of people come into the pads channel of the Stamina Nation Discord and ask for advice on how to make an FSR pad. And usually the response is like, well, there's not really a comprehensive guide, so there's all these different resources and you can kind of piece them together and figure it out. So I just wanted to make one comprehensive guide that is start to finish how to make a pad. Um, and I know a lot of the people asking for advice don't have a lot of DIY experience or have a lot of tools. So uh, from all the FSR travel pads that I've seen, it seems like Matt M's design, the pad that Yutzi is using, uh, is the, the easiest to make in terms of not needing a lot of special tools or a lot of DIY experience. This video is intended as more of like a starting point rather than the end all be all. Um, you should take everything I do here and then uh, modify it to fit with your skills and your tools and the materials that you have available to you. The pad I'm going to be building is really simple. It doesn't have a bar, though it would be pretty straightforward to add one. Uh, and I tried to use materials that are readily available, at least in the US, I don't really know uh, what's available elsewhere. And if you have any questions or I miss something or you just need clarification, I'm always in the pads channel or you can just DM me on Discord. We'll start with an overview of the materials. The base is just a two foot by two foot piece of plywood that I bought at Home Depot. If you can't find it in two foot by two foot, a lot of Home Depots will cut plywood or MDF to size for you, but uh, the one I went to had a piece that was already cut to two foot by two foot, and I think that was around $12. Um, as for the plastic panels, I ordered those cut from TAP Plastics. I have bought and cut sheets of acrylic before, and for the little bit extra that it costs to get them pre-cut, it is well worth it. Um, cutting plastic is a huge pain, uh, and that was $57 with shipping. Matt pointed out that when you buy the acrylic sheets from TAP Plastics, the edges on them are really sharp. So you could either go over them with some coarse sandpaper, if you have a power sander, that would work great, or tap plastics will actually round over the edges for you. It costs a couple dollars extra, and I'm not really sure how aggressively they round it over. Um, and then the FSRs I just ordered from Interlink. I ordered them a little long because they were the same price as the shorter ones, and you can just cut them. That way they're the exact length I need. Uh, and those were $25 with shipping. As for the electronics, I'm using a cheap off-brand Pro Micro, though I'd probably recommend if you don't have a soldering iron to get one of the nicer ones that has the headers pre-soldered. Um, I'm also lucky enough to live near a micro center, so I was able to buy resistors and breadboards and various wires and stuff from there. Uh, but you can just order all that stuff on Amazon or whatever, and it's pretty cheap. I started by laying out all the acrylic pieces on the plywood and then marking where everything was going to go with a pencil. For the steps, I went with 11 inch by 5.5 inch plastic, though you could certainly go smaller. 5.5 inches is a little big. Uh, and I ended up not using the corner pieces that I bought, which were just 5.5 inch square, so you could go without those and your pad would still work just fine. With everything laid out on the plywood, I started cutting a whole bunch of lengths of the adhesive velcro and laying out all the panels, starting with the center panel. I placed down all the steps, making sure to leave a tiny gap between the step and the center panel, just so that there's no friction between the two. Here you can see how I'm mounting the FSR. I'm just sticking it straight to the Velcro and then the panel sits on top, and the panel is only held down on the outer edge. The next day I ended up going back in and adding some of this double-sided mounting tape that I had just to raise up the center panel. And I also added a little bit more of the Velcro so that it wouldn't bow on the top and bottom. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the wiring because everything that I did was basically straight out of Sereni's guide, which I will link to in the description. Um, I will talk though about how I connected the wires to the FSRs. If you buy these longer FSRs, they only come with solder tabs. Uh, Sereni uses these little clips. Um, that's probably what I would recommend. But I had these DuPont connectors, so I took off the plastic end and then I sort of was able to crimp the connector onto the solder tab um, just with a pair of pliers. I've tried soldering onto these tabs before, but it's really easy to melt the plastic and have the tabs fall out, so crimping DuPont cables on works, but I would just recommend that you get those clincher connectors from Sereni's Guide. 
stuck a little bit of tape in between the two solder tabs and the wires that are coming out because if they touch then the FSR won't work. Once I had wires coming off of all four FSRs, I put them back down on the pad and then I just cut some lengths of this silicone wire that I had. But you could also just daisy chain DuPont connectors, get the male to female ones, and then just make sure it's long enough to get to wherever your breadboard's going to be. Then I just assembled my breadboard based on Sereni's guide. Like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but here's the diagram, uh, just follow that. I just used male to male DuPont wires to bridge all the connections, but if I was going to be using this pad long term, I would probably either buy this style of jumper cable or just make my own by stripping lengths of wire because having them all sticking out like this looks kind of janky. Then I put the breadboard in the corner of the pad and plugged all the FSRs in. Like I said, all of the locations for where everything plugs into the breadboard are in Sereni's guide. But once that was all set up, I was ready for the software. For the software, I'm going with Sujit's FSR code which is really a no-brainer over like writing something myself because it has debounce logic built in, it has a really slick front end for adjusting the sensitivities, and Sujit already wrote it, and uh, thankfully he made it open source so we can just grab it and use it. Um, the instructions for that are all in that repo, so I will point you to there for instructions on how to actually get this up and running. You don't need to like know programming or have any experience here, it's all really straightforward. Once that was done, it was time to test this thing out. I probably shouldn't be, but I'm actually really surprised at how well this thing turned out. If I wasn't recording it and making a video on it, it would have taken me like a couple of hours to make the thing start to finish, and it performs surprisingly well. Uh, it, I would probably want to adjust the panel height, which you can easily do by just sticking some tape or some more of that mounting tape on top of the FSRs, and I would probably try and clean up the breadboard and, and hot glue in those connectors just to make it a little bit more permanent, but overall, yeah, it works great if you are just starting out or you're on a budget. I think this is a great pad. I mean, I'm no pro, but Yutzi is using a really similar pad and he's having a lot of success on it. Things I would change, I mean if you had like a drill and a countersink bit, I might go with screws instead of velcro because it is just a little bit squishy for me. And then I might also paint the underside of all the acrylic pieces just to make it look a little less jank. Although I don't know, maybe the jank is part of the aesthetic. So there you have it. I hope that this video helps people who otherwise would be a little nervous to try and make a pad themselves. I probably left something out or didn't explain things very well, so please reach out to me on Discord if you have any questions.